Hey, what up guys? In this video, we're going to talk about promises. So promises is simply um, an object that it is used for async computations. It represents a value that may be available now, in the future or never. So consider this example. Let's say that you perform, uh, you know, a HTTP request to your server and the server simply takes five seconds to process any request. It may be the case that the server says, OK, everything is fine. You can get some data back or the server may say, oops, there was an error. So the server will send you, um, you know, a message uh, explaining what was wrong with the request or, you know, it may, you may even not get uh, any response because the database was stuck doing something and you never receive any response back. But essentially at the end, you simply get some data or an error saying what was wrong with your request. So with promises, we can model the situations and there are a few states that we have to know. So there are three states uh, we have pending. So this is where we simply create the promise and nothing is fulfilled or rejected. Then we have the fulfilled, meaning that the operation was successfully completed or we have the rejected state, meaning that there was something wrong with our request. So to use a promise, we have to create a promise object. And then if the promise was fulfilled, we can use the then method and then, um, you know, pass a callback and perform whatever computation we want. Or if the promise was rejected, then we can use the catch method and then we can perform uh, you know, any, any computation that we want within the callback. So let me go ahead and show you guys exactly how to use promises in ES6. So go ahead and create a promise folder and then create a promise.js and then simply go to your main index and um, import the promise and then simply create a method and then execute the promise inside of that method. So essentially, we've been doing this throughout the course already. So you should know this. So essentially, to create a promise, we have to create the promise object. So I'm going to say const and then promise equals to new and then promise. So uh, make sure that this promise is in capital case because this is an object. And then this takes a callback. So I'm going to pass a function and then this has the resolve and then the reject. And then this is another function. And essentially I will pass some data into the resolve and then reject. So let's actually mimic, um, you know, a request to the server. So let's say that we use the set timeout method. And then this simply takes a function, but let me use the R function and then let's say that this, uh, you know, takes um, three seconds and then I can use resolve to pass some data back. So data back from server. And then let me close that and let's actually do the same thing with this baby. And this will be two seconds. And then instead of resolve, I'm going to use the reject. So reject and then I can say no data back from the server. So to use a promise, I can simply say promise and then I can say dot then and then this takes a function. So let me use the arrow function. And then because remember within the resolve, I simply pass some data. I can get access to that data here. So I can say response. So response. And then let me simply log response. And I can change this by using the dot catch. So I can say uh, catch, right? Just like so. And then this takes a callback as well with the error. And then I can simply log error. So if I save this now, you'll see that we have uh, an error. So you can see that no data back from the server 
and this is because the reject method was invoked first so this is two seconds so um, it was triggered first so we have no data back from the server so even though this is triggered three seconds after so it doesn't really matter so the reject method uh, you know it is stronger because it comes first so if I want to change things around I can simply put this um, you know higher so if I say four seconds and now I should have in three seconds you'll see that data back from server so as you can see promises are really easy to use so in the next video I'm going to show you guys how to use the promise.all method so join me there